no one else, no one else can touch my heart like you do. And I can search, I can search for all eternity, Lord. And find there is none like you. Oh, there is none, there is none like you. No one else, no one else can touch my heart like you do i can search i can search for all eternity lord and find there is not oh there is none there is none Lord, we thank you, Jesus. There is none. There is none like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made, I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will enter, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his gates with praise. Singing, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me I will rejoice for he has made me. He has made me, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, as we enter, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise, singing, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me. He has made me. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again nothing but the blood of i'm singing oh precious in 
is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other foul I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Singing, oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other foul I know. Nothing but, nothing but the blood. 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 Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank Jesus for his blood. Amen. Amen. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Hosanna, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation, Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Oh, oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Hosanna, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna, blessed be, blessed be the rock, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. Jesus is a rock. Jesus is a rock. Jesus is a rock. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the rock. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hallelujah! Amen. Come on and put your hands together for the Lord. Now, y'all know me better than that. Now, that hand clap, that's good for me. But I said, put your hands together for the Lord. Has the Lord been good to you? Has the Lord really been good to you? If he's been good, come on and bless the Lord. Has he brought you from a mighty long way? Has he kept you out of the emergency room? Has he kept your name off the headstone in the grave? Has God been good? Come on and bless the Lord. I truly believe if the Lord haven't been good, you ought to be quiet. If he haven't been good to you, you ought to be quiet. Everybody should have went up and smoked right there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Truly, we give honor to the spirit of Christ. We give honor to the angel of this house, our esteemed Reverend Frederick Crawford, our esteemed pastor. Come on and bless him. Amen. Come on and bless his lovely wife, our first lady. Amen. Amen. And come on and put your hands together for the world's greatest deacons in this side of the Bronx to our deacon board, our officials. Amen. Amen. To our mother board, come on and bless them. 
to those who are visiting with us at favornetwork.net. God bless you. We welcome you into our service. And to you, the Union Grove Missionary Baptist Church, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I must say I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Let us pray. Father, we come now to say thank you. Thank you for your grace and most of all, your mercy, Lord God. Thank you for bringing us thus far, Lord God. We realize that you closed out the book on a few people last night, Lord God. But we realized this morning you opened the book up once again for us, Lord God. You counted our name and the number one more time, Lord God. We look at the hospitals, we realize we could have been there, but you brought us out to your house one more time. We look at the cemetery and we realize we could have been there, but you brought us out one more time, Lord God. Lord God, you kept us in the land of the living one more time, Lord God. And for that, we want to be careful to say thank you, Lord God. Lord God, we, it wasn't because we were so good. It wasn't because we deserved it, Lord God. But it was because of your grace and your mercy, Lord God. And we just want to give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory, Lord God. Now we ask that you bless the one that's going to come and give us our, our word, Lord God. Bless Dr. Cook now, Lord God. Touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet now, Lord God. Give her what she need, Lord God. Give her that word that you designed this morning, Lord God. To find someone in their darkness, Lord God. Bringing them up out of that darkness, Lord God. Running them down the aisle, asking what must they do to be saved, Lord God. Have your way, have your way in the service, Lord God. Bless the ones that's going to lift up the songs of Zion, Lord God. This is your servant's prayer. Bless every church house now that opens up in your name. In Jesus' name, God's children said, amen. Let us all stand. We're going to be led in our congregational hymn by Deacon Tedula. Read. Would you be free? Would you be free from the burdens of sin? There is power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory to win? There is wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. Wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from the passion and pride? There is power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing in Calvary side. There is wonderful power in the blood oh this power 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 wonder working power in the blood of the lamb there is power power wonder working power in the precious blood of the lamb would you be wider would you be wider, much wider than snow? There is power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stain on the sin of life and the soul. There is wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power. In the blood of the Lamb, there is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do 
service for Jesus your King. There is power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There is wonderful power in the blood. Come on, put your hands together. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, 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 one to work in power in the blood of the land. There is power, power, one to work in power in the precious blood of the land. Amen. Amen. sit on our second row. All of our candidates who were baptized on Wednesday night. Amen. 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 Come on up. Amen. Come on and give, it, give them a hand. Clap of praise. Amen. I know it's more than that. Amen. All of our candidates. Amen. 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 Evangelist Drummer Khan. Give us our scripture, and then we're going to have a selection. Is there any more candidates than that? Amen. Come on, evangelist, gentlemen. Amen. And then we'll have a selection from our choirs. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. I'll be reading in your hearings Romans 15. Verses 1 through 7. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one towards another according to Christ Jesus, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The last scripture, the last verse, wherefore receive ye one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Amen. Thank you. 
Okay, it's praying time.
over your life, you realize that you are a miracle. I mean, this upcoming week, I said it at the eight o'clock service, this upcoming week, I celebrate a birthday. And a person with my kind of past, I know I wasn't supposed to see my 40th birthday, but God allowed it that I'm well into my 40s now, and God willing, this week, this week I'll make to be 40 plus years old. And for a person like me, that's a miracle. And so when you sing songs like God is, Working miracles? I don't know about you when you look over your life, but when I look over my life, I realize God, God, God. I don't know about you, but a song like that touches me in places. It has to touch your soul because when you think about your life, think about over your life, the things you've been through and you are still here. The things you've gone through and you didn't think you would make it. The things you've been past and you didn't think you would get over. How many nights you stood up crying, thinking that this won't pass, but God has got you over and past it and God has got you through it and saw you through it all and you don't think that you're a miracle? Hallelujah! I didn't want to start anything, but you know, when you talk about God is working miracles, I don't know about you, just when I look in the mirror, I realize there's a miracle right there. A miracle right there. From being shot, from being stabbed, from being kidnapped. I've been through it. Being incarcerated, being through it, going through it. Going through a testimony, a lifestyle like that, and God still has you here? Why, 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 why? Why, why would God still have you here after you done been through all of that and you are still here? You have something to praise the Lord about! should but you know we have guests today we have a guest a great preacher part excellent amen and so at this time we want to take a moment and recognize all of our first time guests if you are here for the first time we ask that you stand and be recognized all of our first time guests amen god bless you god bless you remain standing all of our first time. i know i saw three other ones i know i saw three other ones amen Amen. Well, on behalf of our pastor, we want to say thank you for coming and sharing with us here at the Union Grove Missionary Baptist Church. We ask that at a later time that's convenient to you, come back and share with us again. And after service, meet with our first-time guest ministries. Leave your name, your number, and a point of contact, 
and our pastor will reach out to you with a gift and thank you for coming and sharing with us. You have enhanced our services on today. All of our guests, if you're here for the second time, all of our guests, please stand, and we want to thank you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless all of our guests. Amen. No, all of you have enhanced our services. Please come back and share with us again at a later time that's convenient to you. Come on and put your hands together for our sister Yvette. Come on. And give us our announcements. Amen. Good morning. morning. Giving honor to God, our pastor who is out in the field today, the Union Grove, Grove clergy, the deacon board, the mother board, our guest preacher, our first lady in her absence, and to all God's children. This past Friday, uh, Superintendent Rachel Smith uh, gave her annual address for the Congress of Christian Education. Amen. <laughs> I just asked, I wasn't able to be there, but I asked her how did it turn out, and she just said, God showed up. So I just take it for that, so we thank God for her and her uh, annual speech. Sister Keisha Martin would like to meet with the following members immediately after service, Deacon Shelley Crawford, Sister Vanessa Bell, Sister Shabazz Wilson, Sister Latrina Lennon, Sister April Ashby, Sister Phyllis, uh, Sister Deborah Bow, Sister Floretha Johnson, Brother Calvin Mask and Sister Monique Harding, uh, please meet her after service. And also for all for all usher for all those who would like to volunteer to be an usher for the months of June and July and working in the cafe on Sunday or Wednesday evening, please see uh, Sister Vanessa Bell to sign up for volunteer to volunteer. On Tuesday, May fifth through Thursday, May seventh, the Union Grove Spring Revival. Each night, service will begin at 7.30 p.m. The revivalist will be Reverend Johnson of Metropolitan New Testament Missionary Baptist Church of Albany, New York. During the spring revival, there will be a seminar on how to grow your church. That starts at 6.30 p.m. and Pastor Crawford will be the seminar's facilitator. At 5 p.m., there will be food on the premises for a purchase sponsored by the scholarship ministry. All students and parents of, that receive scholarships, please come out and help us serve. On Sunday, I'm excuse, Saturday, May 9th, Mother's Day brunch from 11 o'clock a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. Sister Sharice Lanos will be the speaker. Mothers, daughters, sisters, please come out and enjoy the brunch. If you would like to participate in the program, please make sure you see Mother Gertrude Crawford um, or any of the mother ministry um, to give your names in. On Wednesday, May 13th, the pa Pastor Crawford will begin his teaching series, I Am a Church Member, Part 2. The series will continue on, on May 20th and June 3rd and June 10th. On Friday, May 15th, the Union Grove, Missionary, the Union Grove Prison Ministry Service at 7.30 p.m. theme, Go Tell Somebody, Anybody, and Everybody. Guest preacher, Evangelist Timothy Figueroa, Associate Minister from New Life Tabernacle, um, Brooklyn, New York. On Saturday, May, 3rd, May 30th, the male chorus, the Battle of the Male Chorus, the third time. Amen? Um, we, I know it hasn't been consecutive years, but we had it here. Uh, we lost the first time, we won the second time, we still hold on to the trophy and we want to hold on to it for the next time. So that's at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday, May 30th. The tickets are $10 per person. Our own, men's our own Men's Fellowship Choir, Macedonia Baptist Church, and Greater Central will be some of the participants. Where's our men's choir? Okay, we're ready for you. Uh, please see Brother Robert Tutine or Deacon Deborah Smith for more information. Attention all 2015 graduates, please make sure that you submit your name to any of the members of the MAX ministry. Please make sure you get, us, get, get your names to us as soon as possible. Uh, we had baptism this past Wednesday, and we would like to recognize or well, welcome our new members. Can I call your name? May you please stand? Uh, Sister Monique Biswa. Sister 
Gail Covington. Sister Elise David. Brother Taewon, Taewon Edwards. Uh, Tracy Height. Uh, Brother Calvin Mask. Brother J. Leo Stewart. And Sister Melinda Wade. Okay, there was one name that um, there, there's one name that we Sister Polak, we Sister Patricia Johnson. Excuse me. Amen. May you, may you all please stand. Okay, you have been baptized. You are in the midst. Of, you are in the midst, or have completed your new membership classes. Today, you will receive the right hand of fellowship and your first communion to make you full-fledged members of Union Grove Missionary Baptist Church. We thank you so much. members, friends, and relatives that are asking for you to help them get their prayers through. Uh, we're praying for our pastor who has been traveling this past week from Virginia to see about his son Hezekiah and to Atlanta and in Alabama to eulogize his uncle uh, J.B. Breyer. Uh, this past week during our 6 o'clock a.m. prayer, we received the praise report that Hezekiah will be released soon. Amen. <laughs> Uh, the pastor shared with us this past uh, when week that he was attacked, he was being attacked, but having a satanic attack. And he asked uh, the ones that were on the prayer line to uh, write his name in the middle, of piece, the middle of a piece of paper, draw a circle around it, write God on top of it, and he said on the sides of it, write uh, Holy Ghost on both sides, and the top and bottom, write Jesus. And then he said, anoint the paper. And he said, you know, pray for him and, you know, for all that he's going through. And of course, the prayers were to go one down on every one of us in here. So this is a paper that I brought in today. And I've just been praying for him. And I just like want to let Satan know this is war. You know, so we just like to keep praying for our pastor and um, his travels right now. We're also praying for um, all of our incarcerated family and friends. We're praying for the, the family of Bryant and Lillian uh, Lawrence. These are friends of Sister Lisa Williams. We're praying for Brother Andre, I'm um, excuse me, Brother Dondre. That's Sister uh, Andrea Works' son. We know he was uh, had a situation, and he's home now from the hospital. We thank God for that. We're praying for uh, Brother Kendrys Miller. Uh, he had a situation on the train where he uh, his belongings was taken from him, but he's okay. We thank God for him. We're praying for Deacon Daisy Henry. We thank God that Sister Diane Laster was in the hospital, but she came in this morning. We thank God for that. We are praying for Mother, uh, uh, excuse me, Mother Reverend Cleveland. She was, she's home from the hospital as well. Amen. Our bereaved families are Mother Lily Harvey and Mother Arnetta Corporate. Uh, in the death of their brother, uh, Mother Arnetta Corporate was supposed to speak yesterday at the Minister's Widow and Wives Luncheon. Uh, regarding caring for your loved ones, or hopefully she'll be able to just uh, share her experience with us at a later date. We're also praying for Sister, uh, the family of Sister Davina Wilson. That is Reverend Zavette Smallwood's niece. She died this past week. We're praying for that family. We're praying for Deacon Irene Pollock's brother-in-law. His, eighth, his eight-month pregnant niece, fiance, and daughter all perished in a fire last night in Houston. And we're praying for them. So if you think you don't have anyone to or anything to pray for outside of Union Grove. Let's pray for the six people that shot two fatally outside of the um, Brooklyn church after a funeral. Uh, the, pray for the Nepal earthquake that has killed over 6,200 people. The family of Freddie Gray of Baltimore who, who died in the police custody. Uh, we thank God that six police officers have been charged with his death. Amen. 
We're praying for the riots that have subsided in um, Baltimore. We're praying for the youth and young adults that are apoplectic about and do not know how to cha um, channel their energy and their, and their disappointments. We thank God for the Baltimore mom recorded on video chastising her son for participating in the riots. We, uh, <laughs> There's just so much to pray for. You know, they said there's a season for everything, a time to tear down, a time to build, and we're in that season right now. We're still praying for Walter Scott in South Carolina. The New York City police officer shot in the head in Queens last evening. And for good news, we thank God that President Obama will be here in the Bronx at Lehman College tomorrow. We thank God and we pray for his success. Amen? So there's just so much to pray for. And also, uh, the Union Grove Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Annual Cookout to, um, at Holiday Hill in Cheshire, Connecticut. This will be on July 25th, but we're getting started now to receive payments. So if you're interested in going, the adults are $77 per person, the children are $40 per child, three years and three years, three years to 11 years old. Um, and 12 years old will pay adult prices. So pay, the first payment will be due of $40 on May 17th if you are interested. Please see Sister Rachel Smith, the superintendent, Sister Elaine Anson, or Sister Florence Green. Amen? Amen. So you all have those announcements. Uh, let me just read a card. You're all so wonderful. To my pastor and wife and his children and to all Union Grove Baptist Church, our family thank you for your prayers and support. You all have been a blessing for our family. Thank you so much and God bless you all. Happy birthday to all who are celebrating a birthday today and this week. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Oh, the card is from oh, the Hibbert family. Amen. Sorry about that. Uh, happy birthday to all who are celebrating a birthday today and this week. May you please stand so we can just wish you a happy birthday. Happy birthday. Well, I am pretty biased. This is the most beautiful month of the year, amen? <laughs> so happy birthday to you all, and may everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you. Greetings, my sisters. I am Lady Antoinette Crawford from the Union Grove Missionary Baptist Church, where my husband and the senior pastor is Reverend Frederick Crawford. We are located at 1488 Ho Avenue, Bronx, New York. Well, guess what, sisters? By spiritual demand, the One Day Women's Inheritance Conference is back. Yes, it's back on Saturday, November 14, 2015. Please save that date. The conference will be going on. And our conference preacher, yes, she is back. The anointed, the appointed, get your house in order, Reverend Dr. Cordelia Wallace, the co-pastor of the Agape Cathedral, located in Brooklyn, New York. He didn't say, you can have red hair and I can have black hair. But when I squeeze your hand, there should be an anointing that lets me know that we have the same blood type. I said, squeeze somebody's hand. And there will be three powerhouse facilitators, Pastor Patricia Morris of the New Springfield Missionary Baptist Church of Harlem, Pastor Sean Atkins of the Antioch Baptist Church located in Harlem, New York, and Pastor Naomi Tyler Lloyd of the Trinity Baptist Church located in the Bronx, New York. You don't want to miss these women of God. The registration fee is $45. This will include a light breakfast, a hot lunch, all the workshops, and the material. Please go to our Facebook page, UGMBC, Women of Excellence Ministry, and register. Again, UGMBC, Women of Excellence Ministry, and register. I promise you, you don't want to miss this conference. Again, it will be on Saturday, November 14th. Be there. Pray to see you there. God bless you. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Greetings, my sisters. I am Lady Antoinette Crawford from the Union Grove Missionary Baptist Church, where my husband and the senior pastor is Reverend Frederick Crawford. We are located at 1488 Ho Avenue, Bronx, New York. Well, guess what, sisters? By spiritual demand, the One Day Women's Inheritance Conference is back. Yes, it's back. 
on Saturday, November 14, 2015. Please save that date. The conference will be going on. And our conference preacher, yes, she is back. The anointed, the appointed, get your house in order, Reverend Dr. Cordelia Wallace, the co-pastor of the Agape Cathedral, located in Brooklyn, New York. He didn't say, you can have red hair and I can have black hair. But when I squeeze your hand, there should be an anointing that lets me know that we have the same blood type. I said, squeeze somebody's hand. And there will be three powerhouse facilitators. Pastor Patricia Morris of the New Springfield Missionary Baptist Church of Harlem, Pastor Sean Atkins of the Antioch Baptist Church located in Harlem, New York, and Pastor...
territory. God can do it. He's the only one who can enlarge your territory. Ask him for what you need and have faith in him. And he can enlarge your territory. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. another chance for us to just get it right. Amen. Amen. We thank all of you that pressed your way on today for this great communion Sunday. Amen. Amen. This week, this week, as our sister Yvette announced, is our spring revival. Our spring revival. We're excited about our spring revival. Amen. We're looking for you, you and you to be here and to invite your friends, your neighbors, People you walk by in the street, invite them, tell them, come on in. There'll be a word from the Lord for them here in the house. Amen? We're asking all members, please remember that also Pastor is um, teaching a church growth seminar right before revival. Everyone's invited. Spread the word. Please be here at 6.30 to take part in that. Um, we're asking all presidents that are serving, the groups are serving during the week, meaning ushers, nurses, the armor bearers, um, the hospitality, that please have all your team in position to greet our guests and to be here um, for this week. We're asking everyone to please, Pastor asking everyone to please wear your buttons this week. Please wear your buttons this week. Also, there is, yes God, yes God. Amen. 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 Also, as a reminder for all our members that this week of revival, our assessment is $25. Our assessment for revival is $25. Also, we will have parking this week, so please, um, the parking lot around the corner there, so some of you don't have to walk way around. We will have um, parking, of course, first come, first serve, no reserve um, spots, okay? Also, the uh, correction on the Battle of the Mail Chorus, the ticket price is $15. Um, um, the ticket price is $15, so you can see our brother Robert Two-Time or our Deacon Smith for that. Amen. Also, um, Mother's Day brunch, our mother Gertrude is expecting to see all mothers and ladies come out to the brunch. The men are preparing a great m meal for you, so please come out this coming Saturday at 11 o'clock to enjoy what they have put together for you. And we also want to congratulate our superintendent, Rachel Smith, on bringing her annual address. Amen. Being the president of the Christian Education Conference for UMBA. Amen. Also, we are looking for um, the volunteers. So please, today, we're trying to fill all volunteer slots for May and June. So we ask that you please see our sister Keisha Martin and our sister Vanessa Bell today. They will be in the back with different clipboards. We have the... What do we have? We have ushers, we have, we're gonna start the nurses, we'll have that. We will also have the cafe Sunday and Wednesday, and we will also have um, cleaning up after church for 15 minutes, just going through the pews and cleaning up upstairs and downstairs after service. So please see them today. We're really trying to close out May and June. We're looking for you today. So they will be in the back um, with clipboards. Please sign up today, as you know, we're all here and created to serve, amen? We're all here created to serve. And also with ushering, hopefully we're getting through everybody. Pastor has said everybody is going to usher this year to, to walk in those shoes for a day. So if you haven't signed up, don't keep ducking. We're coming. It's going to be winter, 10 feet of snow. You, you're going to be your turn. So you better sign up soon. <laughs> amen. Everybody got to usher, amen. Amen. It's giving time in the house, amen? We're excited and we're... Glad that we're able to give, amen? It's giving time in the house, amen. As the trustees come forward, we're going to ask our Minister McFadden to come and bless the offering. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I am the Reverend Frederick Crawford, Senior Pastor of the Union Road Missionary Baptist Church. And I want to thank you for joining us today through Favor Network. At this time, it is our offering time. 
and we are blessed to be doing so many wonderful things here in this ministry. And I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, I am first of all grateful for you tuning in today, but I also want to appeal to you to sow into this ministry. Before you think about sowing into this ministry, I want you to know that when you sow into this ministry, you are sowing on good grounds. Our ground is covering a lot of territory. We're reaching far and near to help those in need, those who are hurting, those who are suffering, not only here in the Bronx and New York area, but we are spreading far and wide. We are reaching even overseas um, to help ministries in foreign countries. And we thank God for the seed that have already been sown in this ground. But we also want you to consider sowing into this ministry. At this time, we are lifting an offering here at Union Grove Missionary Baptist Church family. And I want you to be a part of what we're doing at this present time. I want you to know that when you sow, you are sowing on good ground. This ground was fertilized by Dr. Jeremiah Crawford, and then it was cultivated by Reverend Dr. Fletcher Crawford. And now I'm toiling here, trying to do ministry at a higher and greater level. And it's all because of supporters and generosity uh, like you. And so I encourage you at this time to sow into this ministry. I want you to know that when you sow into this ministry, God gives you more than what you plant. Again, I want you to know that when you sow into this ministry, God gives you more than what you plant. Would you take a moment to let me pray for you and consider sowing into this ministry? Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you for each and everyone who are viewing us at this time. I pray that you would touch their heart, that they will sow into this ministry, and that you will give them a great harvest in, in harvest season. I thank you, God, for what you've already done in this ministry and the favor you have shown upon this place. And now, God, I pray that you would touch every heart that's viewing us live here here at this service, here at Union Grove Missionary Baptist Church. I thank you for their hearts and thank you for their generosity. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you so much, and I trust that I'll hear from you real soon. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah to our God. Every praise. Every praise, every praise is to our every word of worship. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every praise. Every word of words. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God, my Savior. God, my healer. God, my Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my Savior. God, my healer. God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my Savior. God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my Savior. My healer. My deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my Savior. God, my healer. Deliverer, 
praise, every 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 praise. To our God. Amen. 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 Come on and put your hands together. Amen. It is preaching time. It is preaching time. Amen. At this time we have here on today, this great Sunday, we have one of God's finest. Amen. We have Ambassador Dr. Susan Denise Johnson Cook. Amen. Amen. Dr. Johnson, she was born and raised here in the Bronx, New York. The second of two children, Dr. Johnson Cook lives in New York with her husband, Ronald, and their two sons. Dr. Johnson Cook is a presidential advisor, pastor, theologian, author, activist, and academic who served as the United States Ambassador at Large for International Religious Freedom from April, 2000, April 2011 to October 2013. 2013. She served as a dean and professor of communications at Harvard University, a professor of the theology at New York Theological Seminary. She has, she has served as a pastor at a numerous of churches. She was also the first female senior pastor in the 200-year history of the American Baptist Churches USA. Amen. Come on. And she is the first woman elected to elected as president of the Hampton University Ministers Conference. A conference which amen. Come on. A conference which represents all the major historical black denominations. Johnson also became the official chaplain of New York City Police Department, a position which she held, which she would hold for 21 years becoming, amen, becoming one of the first and only women to hold the position. Dr. Johnson Cook found, founded the Bronx Christian Fellowship Baptist Church in 1996, which she pastored until 2010. Come on and put your hands together for a great woman of God, a preacher par excellent. I introduce to some and represent the others, Dr. Susan D. Johnson Cook, amen. Before she comes, we're going to have a sermonic solo by Sister Sandra Williams. She's going to come and give us our sermonic solo, and then we'll have a selection from our choirs. Oh, no, just our, all right. Come on. Well, good morning, everybody. God is good all the time. I just want to thank God for his mercy. He didn't have to wake any of us up this morning, but he did. I want to thank God for family. I want to thank God for my family. For If it wasn't for them, I don't know where I would be. My natural family and my church family, all one and the same. I want to thank God for blessing me with my grandson, Rajan, here with me today. God brought him all the way from Detroit, Michigan, so he could be by my side so I can ask God to keep his hands on him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. I dedicate this song to each and every one of you. Precious love, kind love, sweet love, kind love. Precious love, Kind love, sweet love, kind love, love, 
a word that comes and goes but few people really know what it means to really love somebody love though my tears may fade away I'm so glad your love will stay cause you show me Jesus who what it really means to patient love kind love sweet love kind love patient love kind love sweet love kind love love the word that comes and goes but few people really know what it means to really love somebody love though my tears may fade away I'm so glad your love will stay cause you show me Jesus oh what it really means to patient love kind love sweet love kind love patient love kind love sweet love kind love on the nights when i cried you loved me when i should have died you loved me i never know why you love me it's a mystery to me now i see oh jesus when all hope was gone you love me now i can go on cause you love me and my fear is gone cause you love me it's a mystery to me now that i see patient love kind love sweet love kind love patient love kind love sweet love kind love patient love kind love sweet love kind love patient love kind love sweet love oh merciful Love. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. bless the Lord at all times. God's praises shall continually be upon my lips. Anybody ready to magnify the Lord with me? Can we exalt his name together? As we entered into the house of the Lord, we sang praises to our God. 
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. To God be the glory for the great things God has done. To our pastor and his wife, First Lady Crawford, amen. The angels of this house who are terrific, amen. I know you have the symbol that says, I love my church, but we love your pastor, amen. And so we give God the glory for his leadership, for his friendship, and for their family. We thank God for the miracle in Hezekiah and for traveling mercies. Come on, give God some glory. And we pray that God's anointing will be on his life as he eulogizes his uncle and for traveling mercies back here. Amen. To our worship leader, God bless you. To all the members of the clergy, to the deacons and officers of this church, to the mother's board, to the choir, to everybody. And Lottie and Dottie, we greet you with Jesus' joy. Amen. I particularly love those who are 70 and older, our elders who blaze the trails that we now walk on and stand on. So if you're 70 and older and able to stand, I want you to just stand so that we might love upon you this morning. Amen. And say thank you. Thank you. If you can't stand, just wave your hand. Praise God. Amen. 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 Y'all look fabulous. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. And thank you. Thank you for the blood, sweat, and tears. Amen. Now, if you're sitting next to someone who just stood up, give them a hug from me. Say, that's from her. Amen. That's from her. That's from her. Amen. Y'all go on with your fine selves. Amen. And to Brother Austin and all those who made it possible for me to be here, you served with excellence. And to Sister Yvette, you read so wonderfully. Some churches you go to, they stumble over the announcements, but you got a whole lot in with eloquence and elegance. Amen. And to the ushers and to all those who serve us today, the music ministry, praise God for you. Amen. So for the last four and a half years, I had the pleasure and privilege of serving one of the baddest men on the planet, President Barack Hussein. Obama, yeah. As his ambassador at large for international religious freedom, which meant that I had to live in Washington and I had all 199 countries under my portfolio. So it was exciting and exhilarating, but it was also exhausting. Slap somebody high five, say yeah it was. But to serve with the first African American president of the United States, what an honor, what an honor, what an honor. And I don't count it lightly. And turn and tell somebody he's all that and a bag of chips. Amen. He's two bags. Amen. He's two bags. Some of us think we the whole bag. We just one Cheeto or one Dorito. But he's the whole 99 cent bag. Amen. And he's got that wonderful wife, Michelle, next to him. Amen. A woman of excellence and elegance. So. I thank God for the privilege. So I bring you greetings. I'm back home now, came back to Harlem, New York, and Bronx, New York, where I'm from, and it's good to be home. Amen? Amen. So you're wondering if I can preach, and I'm wondering if you can pray. Amen? <laughs> Are there any prayer warriors up in here? Now, you know from New York, we got to hear something back. If you say amen every now and then, we'll get out of here on Sunday. If not, we'll be here to Wednesday night Bible study. <laughs> now, can I get an amen up in here? Amen. Okay, thank God. And to the majors who picked me up today, thank God for them. They had to navigate through the bike thon and they were there on time and in person. Amen. So I come from the Johnson Cook household. I've got two sons. One's 19 at Princeton University, and one's 22 starting Drexel Med School. So you know I got to preach for the rest of my life. Amen. <laughs> Turn to tell somebody she got to pay that tuition. Yeah. Baby, nobody ever told me the road would be easy, but I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Amen. So after service today, um, if you would like, downstairs we're going to have a book table. I thank God um, for pastors 
allowing me to have it. We have two books. You can get it as a pre-Mother's Day gift. Uh, one is called Sister to Sister, Devotions for and from African American Women. 48 of the women who were in my life from childhood to adulthood wrote stories that help other sisters get through various life, marriage, divorce. One of the women was my fifth grade teacher in the Bronx, New York, my only black teacher from kindergarten to 11th grade, whose son was in college and was finishing being a camp counselor for the summer on his way back to school and had a head-on collision and was killed. And she wasn't able to talk about it for some 20 years till she wrote the story. And as she wrote the story, other families who had losses were able to read and get through it and were liberated for the first time in their life. So this, and then the signature book is Too Blessed to Be Stressed. Left somebody high five that I am too blessed to be stressed, too blessed to deal with your mess, amen. Um, it are scriptural steps to how do you prevent burnout, how you bounce back from burnout. Anybody ever been burnt out? You have a whole lot on your plate. You have a job, but you don't feel like going to the job. You wake up, but you don't feel like getting up. Anybody ever been there? I started pastoring at 26 years old, single, never took any breaks, and people were seeing me 17, 14 hours a day. And the Lord gave me a sabbatical in my seventh year because I had burned out and allowed me to go to Harvard University. And I lived around the Charles River. And every day I walked around the river, he gave me that scripture. He leads me beside still waters. And he restoreth my soul. And so as he restored my soul, he gave me every word in this book to help others. For scriptural steps to house. So we'll be downstairs after service. If you buy one, I'll sign it and I'll be here till you finish. Amen. But it's preaching time. Turn and tell somebody, it's preaching time. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Take the hand of the person closest to you. If you haven't said good morning, greet them with Jesus' joy. Say, it's wonderful being in worship with you. Now just hold that hand. Don't jerk it off. Just hold it. Don't make a date. Just say good morning. Don't talk about the fish fry. Just say good morning. It's wonderful being in worship with you. Hold that hand, hold it. You can find us on Facebook and on Twitter and on YouTube, Ambassador Sujay, S-U-J-A-Y. Like us if you can on Facebook. Now let's pray, let's pray. God, you're the giver of all good gifts, and we say thank you. Thank you for another Sunday morning. Bless the person whose hand I'm holding. God, we don't know what kind of week they've had or weekend, but you do. And so we ask that you bless them. I want you to shake their hand gently and shake off any discouragement that person has. I want you to squeeze it gently and squeeze some encouragement. Let them know I've got your back. So precious Lord, take our hands. And through the storms and through the night, lead us on to the light. Thank you for the pastor and the first lady and their family. Bless them, O oh Lord, with a Holy Ghost anointing. Bless the new members of this church. Bless the ministry that goes forth both inside and outside these walls. Bless our lives. Now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are our strength. Say strength. strength. And you are our redeemer. Say redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all who believe shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let all who believe say amen. amen. Let all who believe take those same hands and put them together and give God some, some Holy Ghost praise. So I pray my appointing didn't make me lose my anointing. Amen. So let's go to the Old Testament book of Numbers the 27th chapter. And when you find it, I want you to say amen. If you're still looking, say need more time. If you don't know where it is, say Bible study. <laughs> Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, numbers, numbers. Not the, not the lottery, numbers. <laughs> you know, I've been from New York. I've been black all my life, amen. <laughs> When they put the hymn numbers up, 374, they say, I'm feeling a three. No, that ain't the kind of numbers. We're going to numbers 27. 
You ain't feeling a two and a seven. Just turn to it. Amen. Stand with me. Stand with me for the reading of God's word. If you're able to stand. And to those who were streaming too, may the Lord bless you. Then came the daughters of Zelophehad, the son of Hepher, the son of Gilead, the son of Maker, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And these are the names of his daughters, Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Tirzah. And they stood before Moses and before Eliot saw the priest and before the princes and all the congregation by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation saying, our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but he died in his own sin and had no sons. They had no sons. Why should the name of our father be done away with from among his family because he hath no son? Give unto us therefore a possession among the brethren of our father. And Moses brought their cause before the Lord. Say before the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, The daughters of Zelophehad speak right. Thou shalt surely, shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren. And thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. Say, pass unto them. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a man die and have no son, then ye shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. And if ye have no daughter, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his brethren. And verse 11, And if his father hath no brethren, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his kinsmen that is next to him of his family, and he shall possess it. Say, possess it. And it shall be unto the children of Israel a statute of judgment. Say, statute of judgment. As the Lord commanded Moses. As you take your seats this morning, we want to preach on the theme, it's your time and it's your turn. Turn to someone and say, it's your time and it's your turn. Now turn to someone else and on the other side and say, baby, I don't know about you, but it's my time and it's my turn. Now put those hands together and claim it today that it's my time and it's my turn. journey back with me to a time when everyone was not celebrated. When boy children were born, they were lifted up and celebrated, but when a girl was born, she was merely tolerated. In fact, they had it in the culture that women really were supposed to be seen and not heard. It was a patriarchal orthodox culture and they respected that and traditions were very rampant at that time. But the numbers writer thought it was so important that we know about something that changed history, that he lifted up five women in this text. Uh, they're not the women we normally read about. This is not Deborah or Mary Magdalene or Mary, the mother of Jesus. No, these are five women, Malan, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Tirzah, and they are known as the daughters of Zelephadad. Their father, Zelephadad, was a son, but he had no sons. But these five women came together because it was their time and it was their turn. Like Alicia Keys says, these girls were on fire. Are y'all praying with me now? Uh, but one day the dad and many of the men in the village died and they found themselves in a crisis. They were manless and fatherless. But Martin Luther King says the measure of a man, the measure of a woman, is not where you are at moments of comfort, but how do you handle crises and controversies? That's what Baltimore is dealing with right now. How do you handle the crises and the controversies? And we lift up that state attorney, 35 years old, handling a crisis and a controversy. But tradition had it at this time that whenever the father died, all of the inheritance, that's the car, the Cadillac, the coats, the cash, all of that went to the sons. But what happens when there are no sons? No one had ever raised the question, that is, until some strong sisters came on the scene. 
And they lifted a question, why should our father's inheritance be done away with just because he had no sons? And they declared, give unto us what our father has for us. And they followed protocol and they went to Moses and to the priests and to the princes and it says to all of the congregation and Moses took it to God and God said, surely, yes, give them what's rightfully theirs. And in fact, change the laws to reflect that whether it's son or daughter, male or female, they should receive what their father has for them. So I learned some lessons from this story that I call lessons in living or success stories from the scriptures. The first thing I learned from this story is that blessings are not gender specific. Can I get a witness? God says, I've got blessings for everybody in this house. Male, female, he created them, them. In fact, the Lord is blessing somebody right now. Can I get a witness up in him? Turn to tell somebody you're sitting next to bless somebody. The Lord's blessing me right now. He woke me up this morning. He started me on my way. Anybody know that you are blessed somebody? You may have been a mess, but you are a blessed mess. Right now, the Lord's got a blessing in this house for you. But the next lesson I learned in the story is that you have not because you ask not. These women were not afraid to ask for what was rightfully theirs. God had been waiting for someone to come. Knock and the door shall be opened. Seek and ye shall find. Ask and it shall be given unto you. God had been waiting to give bountiful blessings. God's got explosive blessings for someone in here. In fact, Jeremiah 29, 11 says it this way. God says, you've got a fabulous future. I've got plans for you to prosper and not for you to be defeated. Anybody know that God's got plans for you in here? Turn and tell somebody, I've got a fabulous future. Turn back to them and say, you don't have a clue who you're sitting next to. God's got explosive, dynamite, didymus. He's got blessings in this house for someone today. But the next lesson in this story is you got to get off the sidelines. When it's your time and it's your turn, God says, you got to get in the game. Turn to tell somebody, you got to get in the game. I um, was a pre-Title IX female athlete. I grew up on the Grand Concourse on 165th Street, and so we would go down the hill to Malali Park. Oh, yeah, yeah, Malali. New Yorkers play some of the best ball in New York, and I was a basketball player. They didn't call us athletic females. They used to call us tomboys. But turn and tell somebody, she got game. Yeah, she got game. Yeah, she got game. And um, every day after school, um, I would do my homework and then I'd go down that hill to Malali Park and I'd sit on the bench for years watching Pepe and Jerry and all of them babies. They got all them nicknames. I would watch them play ball. I'd sit on the bench on the side and one day Jerry came over to me after he was drinking his MD-2020. He said, baby, baby girl, y'all don't remember the paper bag, but he had some in the paper bag. He said, baby girl, if you're going to play this game, you got to get in the game. And he tossed the ball to me, and I was at the half line, and I got a three-pointer. Turned and tell somebody, yeah, she got game. She got game. My maiden name is Johnson. You heard of Magic Johnson? I, okay, okay, okay. But I had to get in the game on what God is saying to you in this ministry. You, you cannot sit on the sidelines. You got to get in the game. Some days you got to dribble, and some days you got to take a layup, and some days you got to take a jump shot, but you got to find something you can do. Maybe you can usher. Maybe you can be in deacon. Maybe you can sing in the choir, but you got to get off the sidelines and get in the game. God's been waiting for you. All these years you've been sitting on the sideline watching the moves, but God says you got to get in the game. It's your time and it's your turn. But the next lesson I learned in this story is that timing is important. That's why this 35-year-old state attorney could come. It was her time and it was her turn. She hadn't been sitting on the sidelines, but she was learning the game, and now she came into the front headlines. Timing is important. Had these women moved a week ahead, they would have missed it. Had they waited another week, they would have missed it, but they moved right on time. Timing is important. Ecclesiastes says to everything there's a time and a matter and a purpose for everything under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to go out, a time to come in. Timing is important. 
That's why we don't want our little girls wearing makeup too soon. It's not your time to be a woman. Be a little girl as long as you can be a little girl. Be a little boy as long as you can be a little. You got the rest of your life to be grown, but be who God made you to be as a child in the kingdom. Can I get a witness up in here? Timing is important. By the same token, we don't want our elders wearing mini skirts because that time is over. Yeah, yeah. It's over. Cover it up. Cover it up. Put on the long skirts. Put on the spandex. I don't care. You may have had legs, but they look like chitlins now. Cover it up. Timing. Timing. Uh-oh. Say, she didn't go there. Yeah, she didn't go there. She didn't go there. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she did. Timing is important. Just look straight ahead. They'll know I'm not talking about you. Just look straight ahead. But what I like about these women is not only did they know what time it was, but they followed protocol. In the church world, we say do things decently and in order. They first went to Moses because they understand leadership is important. Not everybody's called to be the leader. Not everyone's time is to be the chair of the deacon's board. You have a chair, you have a pastor, and it's their time. You got to follow sometimes. Hello, somebody. Follow protocol. But then it said they went to the priests because they understood this was a spiritual journey. It said as they were standing, they stood by the door of the tabernacle. So you can't be so busy learning PowerPoint that you forget the point of power. Hello, somebody. Woo! Slap three people high five. Say, yeah. His name is Jesus. Lily of the valley, the bright morning sun. You got to know who the point of power is. And he walks with me and he talks with me. I got to know the point of power before I enter the room. But then it said they went to the princes because they understood we're royalty. Ah, oh, oh, yeah. Kate and Will are not the only royalty. We're also royalty. We are joint heirs to Jesus, to the throne. Come on, somebody. When you look at royalty, they walk in like there's somebody. They, they talk like there's somebody. The, the men have their pants up and the sisters have their skirts down. When you're royalty, you walk in like you're somebody. God says we are royalty. In fact, turn to someone and say, you're sitting next to your royal highness right here. Oh, excuse me, your royal highness. I'm royalty, I'm royalty. Do you know who I am? And then it said they went to all the congregation because we have to have accountability partners in this life. The word says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Because as we come together, when all God's children get together, what a time, what a time. But it makes sure that you pray for me and I pray for you. And you check me out and I check you out. All the congregation, this is our place that we come on Sunday morning for accountability. Ah, but then what I like about the story is they understood who they came from, that there was a history there, that they came from a father who was somebody. They said, yeah, he died, he had his sins, but he was not like Korah. He didn't diss God. He died in his own sin, and you got to know your history. See, Black History Month is February, but Black History should be all year long because we black all year long. Hello, somebody. My late parents, the late Dorothy C. and the late Wilbur T. Johnson, were Southerners. Uh, my dad was from Petersburg, Virginia, and my mother was from Waxhaw, North Carolina. Any Tar Heels up in here? Anybody from Virginia up in here? Uh, they were part of the black migration that came to the north, and so they met on their first day in New York, and then they had us, and so we were northern kids. But for us to know our history, this is what they did. Every summer, we went down south. Are there any down south folk up in here? This is how it happened. I went to PS 78 Bronx, Needham Avenue. Woo woo. So the last day of school would be the last business day of June. If it was June 30th, we had to wait to June 30th. But this is how it went. 9 a.m. we go in, we get our report card. We'd either get a gold star, blue star, red star, needs improvement, unsatisfactory, or you're getting left back. One of those. Then at 12 noon, we'd have the talent show. Oh, we'll put the record player on. It had the little needle. 
and we put a dime on the needle. Come on, come on. Don't act like you always had a CD player. We had a record player. And you put a dime on it so it wouldn't skip. And we play our 45s. Oh, come on. First, we put on Michael Jackson, I want you back. And we put the Apple Jacks on so we'd be like Michael Jackson. Don't act like y'all never partied up in here. In fact, Friday night, y'all slid to the left. All God saying is Sunday morning, slide to the right. Two times, everybody. Don't perpetrate everybody. And we got finished with Michael Jackson, we'd put on Diana Ross and the Supremes. Guess who was Diana Ross? Stop! In the... Before you break my heart. And then at three o'clock, we'd have the party, the end of the year party. We'd have cupcakes and Hawaiian punch and soda. That's really where childhood obesity got started. It was all that sugar. And then we'd go home and our bags would be packed. Some would go on Greyhound and leave the driving to us, and some of us went on trailways. We had a shoebox, because we couldn't stop. There was no McDonald's back then. We had a shoebox with fried chicken and aluminum foil, pound cake wrapped in wax paper, we had to have the salt and the sweet. I mean, you're looking at a pound cake, mama, okay? Every pound on me came from pound cake. Then we'd have ham sandwiches on white Wonder Bread with mayonnaise. And then we'd have sodas that we would freeze all night. And by the time we got to Washington, it'd be like a Slurpee. You open that thing up, and baby, we eat on down the road. Then we get down to North Carolina. All the kids would go to the maternal side because your grandmother be there and the aunts and there'd be second cousin removed for the third cousin. They'd all be waiting there. They had two names, Baby Lee and Mary Lee and Mamie Sue and Bethy May and oh my gosh. And we'd have to go down the line and kiss everybody. Ooh, Susie's here, ooh. And then at the end of the line, I had a blind Aunt Miss. It wasn't her blindness that scared me, but she used to dip snuff. So she'd have snuff juice dripping down her chin. And they say, give Aunt Miss a kiss. No! That's traumatic. That's trauma. They say, you better go get that switch. Get the switch, because I ain't kissing Aunt Miss. And we'd spend the whole summer down south because it was part of our history and it was rich. And we'd look at the fields and we milked the cows and we shucked the corn and they barbecued a pig. They'd eat every part of the pig. Hoghead cheese and ribs and chitlins and souse. Come on, don't act like you ain't always been a vegetarian. I'm a carnivore, baby. I had it all. But we'd learn our history as relatives would go by back and forth, and we would visit cousins' homes and aunts' homes, and we'd see how they were quilting, and some were gardeners, and some were seamstresses, but they were proud, wonderful people, and oh, they were so rich. It was part of our history. And we'd be on rocking chairs drinking lemonade and sweet tea. They'd pour a five pound bag of Domino's. That's where adult diabetes got started. But then there wasn't a lot of electricity on the streets back then, it was the country. And if you wanted to use the bathroom, you had to go out there. That's traumatic for a city girl. Where's the bathroom please? It's the outhouse, oh my gosh. But when it got dark, 
we go inside. We had a nine inch black and white TV. And they take the foil from your fried chicken and put it on the antenna. Trying to get a set. Oh, don't act like you had a 52 inch screen TV. And they have five channels, two, four, five, seven, and nine. And about 10 o'clock, the Star Spangled Banner would come on. And the flag would start waving. And it was bedtime. But this was the trip. They had this plastic thing with yellow, green, blue, and red. And you were supposed to put it across your TV to make it look like it was a color TV. Anybody remember them days? But then on Sunday morning, we crossed the railroad tracks. And we go to Black's Memorial Presbyterian Church, about the size of this church. And way in the back would be a mother. And she starts singing, I come to the garden alone. While the dew is still on the roses. And the voice I hear calling on my ear, the Son of God discloses. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me. I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. What a rich history. Jesse Jackson used to say, I am somebody. And you got to remember, you are somebody. Turn to tell somebody, I, I am somebody. And it's my time, and it's my turn. These women, Mola, and Noah, and Hogla, and Milka, and Tirza, said, it's our time. Our turn. We've been waiting patiently. We've been sitting on the sidelines. We've learned the game, but it's now our time to get in the game. Give unto us what our Father has blessed us with. We've been waiting for a blessing from God. And Moses said, surely God says. In fact, the laws are going to be changed. That whether it's male or female, you shall get what your father had for you. You stand on the shoulders of those who are rich. A man who had dignity. You stand on your father's shoulders. Both of my parents are deceased now. And I realize how blessed I was to have them in my life. That I stand on the shoulders of proud black people. We, we lift up the names of Shirley Chisholm, and I, certainly we should do that, and Barbara Jordan, but you should lift up your mama and your grandmama's name. People who were in the fields, people who slaved so that you could be who you are, who had to take a whole lot of mess so that you could sit here and be blessed. We should lift up their names. And so as often as I can, I lift up Dorothy C. and Wilbur T. Johnson's name. I had the privilege of working for two presidents of the United States, and I'm about to take my seat, but a few years ago, there was an election, and one of the presidents called me and said, look, uh, the election is going to be in North Carolina, the deciding state, and we know you've got roots in North Carolina, so we need you to help us. I was pastoring here in the Bronx at the time, and I said, look, I'm a pastor. I can't leave my pulpit on Sunday. Um, they said, well, after church, go to LaGuardia Airport. There's going to be a ticket for you, and we need you to meet us in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. So I pastored, and I preached that day, shook hands, did all the things that a pastor does, and then I went to LaGuardia Airport. Sure enough, there was a ticket with my name on it. I got on U.S. Air. I landed in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. The Secret Service was there. They were working that day. It was a, a white president. They, it was a white president, so they were working that day. And so um, um, they said, uh, Reverend Susan Johnson Cook, we've, we've got your name on the list, and here are your credentials for the day, and this is what your assignment's going to be. Um, you're going to introduce the president, he's going to introduce his candidate, and that's your assignment for today. Okay, I'm going to introduce the president, he's going to introduce his candidate, that's your assignment. Can you handle it? I was like, yeah, I can handle it, I can handle it. So they said, the president's about to come out, there are two limousines out front with the flags on them, get in the limousines and we're getting ready to go. So I went to the limousine number one, they said, no, that's the president's, go to number two, don't get it twisted. I said, okay. Number two. And so I got in number two and I was, I was there, I was in this car. The motorcade was in front of us, it was going down the middle of the aisle. There were people on both sides of the road. They were waving to us. I was digging the scene with my preacher lean. Oh yes I was. They were waving and I was waving too. I was like, baby, you don't know me, but I'm up in here. God bless America, land that I love. 
Whoa, wave your hand in the air. I was like, yeah. So the sirens were going and, and the motorcades were leading us and we get to Elizabeth State University. Oh, we jump out. I'm psyched now. I'm pumped. And so I introduce, ladies and gentlemen, the president of the United States, he says, oh, you get that well. He introduces his candidate. Whoo! Slapped each other high five. I'm like, I'm slapping high five with the president. Go, Mr. President. Yeah. So we go to two other places and same assignment, same thing. And so I'm pumped now. I got, I got my rhythm. I got my flow. They said, look, we can't cover the whole state by motorcade. It's too big a state. So we're going to go on my plane. So we go to this field and there's a plane there. There are four seats, two facing each other. The president's in one, there's a governor in one, a mayor in one, and then there's me. I said, my Lord, what a morning. So I'm sitting diagonally across from the president and he's talking to me, trying to make me comfortable, trying to tell me what the order of the day is. All I could think of as a professional speaker was to say, yes. He says, can you elaborate a little? I said, yes, sir. <laughs> so we got this rhythm going. He says, we're about to take off. And so on the other side of the plane, on these three steps, steps up this black male pilot. I said, uh oh. <laughs> now, you know, when there are only two black people, you try to make eye contact. <laughs> you really want to say, yeah! <laughs> but you can never let them see you sweat. So I said, you got me, I got you. Can you fly this thing? Okay. So we land in three different fields that day. We land in field number one. I get out, I introduce him. We're in New Bern, North Carolina. People have their signs up for the candidate. They're excited about the president. He shakes hands, we get back on the plane. Field number two, same assignment. He shakes hands. We get to field number three outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. We were in the fields where my mother had been on knee, her knees in this generation, in the blazing sun, picking cotton and tobacco in this generation, on her knees in the blazing sun. I'm standing where my mother had been kneeling. She had to use an outhouse. I now walk in the front door of the White House. Tell me what a mighty God we serve. Heaven and earth adore him, angels bow before him. God blessed me. But I thank God I had a praying mama. And I imagine while she was on her knees, she was praying one day my kids won't have to pick cotton. One day my kids won't have to pick tobacco. One day my kids won't have to be in the blazing sun. And because somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the, anybody have a praying mama up in here? Aren't you glad they prayed? Man, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah! Praise God for saving me. So I say, can't nobody do me like Jesus? Can't nobody do me like the Lord? Pick me up, turn me around, place my feet on higher ground. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. So God says, it's your time. And your turn. Too many people shed blood so that you could be who you are. So we're going to stand all over this church. And I want you to lift your hands and say, God, I thank you for my time and my turn. God, I thank you that I'm royalty. God, I thank you for Jesus. I'm joining heir to the throne. I'm royalty! Say yeah! Say yeah! Say yeah! Say yeah! I've had some good days, and I've had some hills to climb, but the songwriter says my good days outweigh my bad days, so baby, I won't complain. So are there any praisers in the house who know how far the Lord has brought you from? Are there any praisers in the house? Say yeah! Say yeah! Come on, say yeah! Come on, wave your hands in the air! Just wave them like you just don't care! 
If you love the Lord and you feel all right, let me hear you say, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. The doors of the church are open. This is an invitation to Christian discipleship, to become a member of this great church. You may have been sitting on the sidelines coming week after week and saying next week I'm going to join but this is your time yeah. and it's your turn God's been waiting for you to give him your life and when you give him your life he gives you eternal life a blessed life a saved life so if you've been waiting God's been waiting for you all you've got to do is step out from the pews where you're seated and come forward and give one of these officers, ministers, your hand. And you're going to give Jesus your heart. Everybody call his name. Say Jesus. Jesus. He's the bright and morning star. Say Jesus. Jesus. There's healing in his name. If someone comes, put your hands together and give God the glory. Amen. Say Jesus. Amen. There's joy in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. But you know what? It's also your time to evangelize. This is what I'd like you to do. I want you to turn to someone in front of you or behind you that you did not come to church with. I just want two people connected. I want you to take their hands and let them take your hands. Not a triangle, not a quadrangle, not a rectangle. Two people. Look them in the eye and introduce yourself. Say they call me Bebe, Felicia, Q, Big Boy. See, I can't even pronounce my name. It's one of them long African names. Shh. Now say, may I ask you two questions? Ask them, is Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of your life? Say, are you sure about it? Second question. Do you have a church home where you can serve him, worship him, tithe unto him, and get off the sidelines? Now, if they say, shh, if they say, no, I don't know, shrug their shoulders, say, I'm thinking about it, I want you to walk with them down to the altar. And I want you to lead someone to Christ this day. If they say, no, I don't know, I'm thinking about it, you lead someone to Christ today and let the Lord use you. Is that somebody else coming? You coming? You coming? You coming? Yeah! Hallelujah! Is there someone else? I feel there's one more from the spirit. Is there someone else? Give him your life. Give him your heart. This is a good church. A great church. Is there one more today? Is there one more today? Give him your life. Praise God. Some are coming just for special prayer. That's good. Is there one more? One more? One more. One more. One more. One more. One more. I want you to help me one more time. Find one more person whose hands you didn't take. One more person. You may have to scoot over. You may have to move over. Quickly, two people connected. One more time. There's somebody else today. One more time. Find someone else whose hands you're taking. You may have to cross the aisle and say, hello, this is, my name is, is Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of your life? You sure about it? Do you have a church home, a church family? They said, no, come on, lead them, lead them today. They may just be waiting for you. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. One more time, I have decided, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. Turning back, no turning back.
turning back. No turning back. No turning back. back. Amen. Come on and put your hands together. Come on and bless the Lord. Amen. Come on and bless the Lord for our preacher, our Dr. Susan Johnson, who did an excellent, 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 wonderful job. I bless you. We're going to have, we have a, Good afternoon. Uh, we have Sister Crystal Boston and her baby, Aaliyah. Uh, Sister Crystal Boston is coming for baptism. Amen. 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 And we have Sister Cynthia. She's coming for prayer right now. Thank Amen. you so much. Amen. Amen. This time, we're going to have an altar call. We have a young lady here who's here for prayer, and we don't know what the situation may be, but anyone else, we're going to have prayer. One time, anyone else who's in need of prayer, we offer you that opportunity. Come bring it to the altar now. Come to the altar now. Anyone else, come and stand with our sisters. Come on. It is prayer time. If you have something you're struggling with, if you have something you're dealing with, if you have an ailment, whatever it may be, we offer you that altar call now. Amen. Amen. Minister, our minister, McFadden, will come and lead us to the throne of grace. Come close. Come close. Grab someone's hand. Grab their hand in love. This is a serious hour. And it is prayer time. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Lord, most gracious and everlasting Father, we come to you at this moment, God, seeking you once again today, God. Lord God, we say thank you, God. Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning, God. We were not, God, one of the ones that was laying on the cooling board this morning, God. For that, God, we say thank you, God. Lord, most everlasting Father, God, we come this morning, God, at the altar, God, leaning and depending on you, God. For that, God, we say thank you, God. Lord God, whatever God is going on, God, with our people today, God, we know that you are healing, God. We know that you are delivering, God. Right now, God, we plead the blood of Jesus, God. Right now, God, heal them, God. Build them up, God, where they are torn down, God. And for that, God, we say thank you, God. And then, God, we ask you, God, if they're God, is anything wrong with their minds, God? Right now, today, touch, God. Right now, heal, God. Right now, deliver, God. We know you can do it, God. Right now, God, our nation, God, is hurting as a whole, God. Right now, God, touch God. Deliver God. Heal God. We know you can do it, God. Lord God, we will praise and worship you, God. Each and every day, God, Lord God, for those, God, that are standing at the altar, God, Lord God, I don't know what they're in need of, God. Lord, I'm not going to ask what they're in need of, God, because I know you got it, God. You got it, God. You
you got their back, God. You are there for them, God. Let them know, God, that you are God. And only you can do it. Not your mother. Not your father. Not your brother. But you, God. You can do it, God. Move, God. Move today, God. Right now, God. I plead the blood of Jesus, God. Touch, God. Tear down, God. The enemy, God. Lord, God. If there's anyone, God. Right now, God. High blood pressure, move. Diabetes, move. Cancer, move. You have no room. God got it. God got it. God can do it. We just got to believe it. God got it. He can do it. He can do it. God got it. God got it. I ask you, leave it. Give it to God. God got it. God got it. God got it. God got it. He can do it. He can move it. He can change it. God, deliver. Heal. Set free. Do it, God. Do it, God. Do it, God. Do it, God. We just need to know that God got all things in his hand. God can deliver us from anything. God can touch you right now and heal you. You just got to believe that it's done. God got the healing power. He has healed your body. He's healed your mind. He's healed your soul. And we say today, God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for doing it, God. Thank you for doing it, God. Thank you for moving it, God. Right now, God, we say thank you, God. Thank you, God. We can't thank you enough, God. We can't thank you enough, God. Right now, God, thank you. We praise you. We worship you. We glorify you, God. Right now, God, it's done. It's over. It's done. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. your hands together for the Lord. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I'm blessed. Now, right before our communion, we're going to take up an offering for this great preacher. We're going to take up an offering, and we ask that you get your offering in your hand so that we can bless this great woman of God. Come on. We ask that you get your offering in your hand. We're going to get a, take up our offering and then we're going to prepare our hearts and minds for our communion. And while you're getting your offering together, talk to the Lord about preparing you for this great communion. Talk to him. Let him know all about it. Here, here's my, my money here. Come on, let us, let us pray. 
Father, we come now to say thank you for this opportunity to give. We ask that you bless those who are going to give, those who want to give, but are unable, Lord God. Bless them now, allow them to know and understand that when we give into your kingdom, there's the only increase that we receive. Lord God, we ask that you bless us now, Lord God. Bless our finances. Bless your kingdom that this offering is taken up for. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right. All right. Well, let us all stand. You gonna? You gonna? Okay. They're gonna come up the aisle. If you can, to make it easier, maybe you can pass your money to the middle. Yeah. Bring the money down. Pass your money up. They're gonna walk the basket up to make it easier. While they're doing that, we can prepare the table for communion. We can get the tables prepared. Brother Rob, brother. Amen. Amen. It is communion time. We're going to ask for our candidates who were baptized on Wednesday night to come up front. Let us prepare our table. And at this time, we're going to put it in the hands of our Dr. Susan Johnson and our Reverend Glover. Amen. And they're going to take this thus far. And then afterwards, they'll close out and give us our benediction. Amen. Amen. Come.
deacons, ministers. We're going to give the right hand of fellowship to our candidates from Wednesday night. Amen. And now it will be in the capable hands of our Dr. Johnson. Praise the Lord. You were candidates, now you are members. With the full rights and privileges of every other member of this church. Face me for a minute. Turn to the altar. This is the altar of Jesus Christ, and now you are part of the, his family and this church family. So we welcome you, and on behalf of Pastor Crawford, and now the officers and members are going, the officers are going to give you what is the right hand of fellowship. You're going to follow me. Do the, okay, we're going to do that. You're going to go, and you now may face your new church family. Can you say welcome, family? <laughs> say we're glad you're here. You've been baptized. And now you are a full member of the Church of God in Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome. Amen. Welcome. Praise God. Okay. Praise God. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting on. What a blessedness. What On the everlasting, come on, sing with me. Leaning, lean, and we're safe and secure from all along. Where well, we are leaning, come on, join me, choir. Where well, we are leaning, where well, we're leaning. Leaning on the everlasting arm. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day.
you, Jesus. We prepare now to come to the Lord's table. It is for any baptized believer who believes that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior of our lives. Let us pray before we come to the Lord's table. He says, if you have aught against anyone, get it straight so that you don't come unworthy to his table. God, we thank you for the bread and the cup. We thank you for what you did for us in the shedding of blood and breaking of bread that you broke your body for us. So God, we partake of this as often as we remember you, we say thank you. Those who remember him say thank you and amen. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, the Lord Jesus took bread and he blessed it and then he broke it saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat this bread, remember me. And in a like manner, he took the cup filled with the fruit of the vine. He said, drink of it all of you for remission of sins. And as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth my death until I come again. And guess what? He's coming back again. And he's looking for a church without spot or wrinkle. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh, at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I'm happy. And now I am happy all the day. Oh, at the cross, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. Oh, it was there. By faith, I receive my sight, and now I'm happy. Alas, and did my Savior bleed? Alas, and did my Savior bleed? And did, and did my sovereign? Would he devote? Would he de a sacred thong for such a worm as I? For such a worm. Eh. Come on, everybody! At the cross, at the cross, at the cross, where I first 
saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away it was there by grace but I received my sight and now I'm happy I am happy all the day where I first saw the light and the burden Show away my 